This, this is for either or both of you, Doug Turnbull for WSB and PRN. J just for clarification, we've seen so much different kinds of racing this weekend. What made what were some of the characteristics that made the action on the track today different than what we saw with the cup cars earlier in the weekend? Go for it. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the race is bigger. The pack's bigger. It seemed like you can get more cars to go down there. That's probably what it was most. It's instead of a 20-car field, you got 40 cars and 30 of them really racing. So um, it seemed like the, there was times that you had enough cars down there that the bottom was stronger uh, for a while. And um, I thought that was fun, kind of working the lanes back and forth. And tires would start wearing out and cars were wiggling around the racetrack. And then the top would start to prevail again. And, um, you know, it made you – it was a lot different race than what we were all – expecting uh, I, I was expecting us to be up against the wall and uh you know i quickly found out or pretty early in the race that this is going to go a little bit different than we thought we was going to i'm going to stay back there in the back yeah mike bianchi uh, how 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 was the racing today did you guys like it and is there anything that could be done to avoid all the wrecks in the last 10 laps <laughs> uh, i thought the racing today was pretty good um you know like joey said i think having a full field of cars obviously just allowed the bottom to materialize and have enough strength down there to be able to keep some momentum rolling and uh, not everybody just being able to be so strong around the top. So, um, you know, there was some good racing today. I thought the, the, the two wide, sometimes the three wide action, sometimes the mixing it up, guys would get loose and get shuffled out was, uh, was pretty intense there in a few times. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say that much needs to be done. Maybe we just don't need to have uh, races with 20 cars on the track. We need 40. Go to Matt, Jeff, and Dinah. John Haverland, New Mexico Motorsports Report. To your left, Kyle. Um, what does this win mean for the organization, uh, you know, ha having J.D. passed away a few weeks ago? It's obviously very, very good and, um, and, a, and a boost and confidence and everything else for everybody in, included with, with Joe and all the things that Joe and the family had gone through over the last few weeks and losing J.D. Uh, it certainly is a, a very – bittersweet situation for myself as I'd much rather have been the one to win the race and be in victory lane and celebrating with uh, with my team and with everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing and uh, and being a part of the, the JD celebration. But overall, um, you know, you couldn't be more thrilled for uh, all the 500 people back at Joe Gibbs Racing that that knew and respected and, and obviously looked up to JD for the person that he was and for the relationships that he gave all of us. We'll go to Jeff, Dinah, and then Al. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Um, for, for both of you, I guess, I, I've only gotten the chance to see the replay once, so I haven't exactly processed what happened. But, Joey, it looks like you were upset with McDowell because he – so, like, coming into three and four, he goes with Kyle, and you're, you're feeling like if McDowell sticks with you there, you have a chance to get a run on Denny. Is that correct? And then, Kyle, what did you need, like, run-wise or somebody help-wise help, help -wise to catch Denny there? Yeah, I, I was just, um, you know, when, when Kyle got a, a great run down the back stretch, it, there was no blocking that move, and um, we were going to crash if I was going to try to block that one. So I had to had to let that one go, and, and I, I thought, you know, with the blue oval behind him, uh, that, that the forward would, would come with me. It's kind of the, the choices that you have to make, uh, and you have a split-second um, decision on all that, and, and typically you kind of expect manufacturers to work together, you know, like the Toyotas do or the Chevys do, and I was expecting that as well um, in that moment uh, coming there to – checker flag and uh, uh, was very surprised by his decision and for me I was trying to back back Joey up at the entrance to pit road and through the trial and uh, you know try to build that energy between Joey and who was behind him I can't remember who it was at the time I think it was a 47 and um, coming out of the trial Joey just pulled left and got to my inside and made it too wide instead of giving me the the shove so it it was, um, you know, his race to go in as well too. Just didn't, just didn't happen. We're also joined by our third place finisher, Eric Jones, driver of the number twenty Sport Clips Toyota. We'll go to Dinah, Allen, and Jerry. <laughs> Dinah Pulver with the Daytona Beach News Journal. He's going to pass everybody. <laughs> Dinah Pulver with the News Journal. There was a lot of talk on after Thursday about the Fords, but tonight the Toyotas came out on top. Does that, what does that say about the Toyotas? Were they outperforming or outlasting? Who's that for? Who's that for? Which one of us? For you. I'm sorry. For me? Yes. I'll take this one. Too. Yeah, good. You can do the politics. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought the Fords were really really strong still, especially when they got themselves in in a group, you know, and they had 
eight of them in single file, whatever. Uh, they were pretty fast. But then there were times out there certainly that – uh, the 95 led a lot of laps. We led a lot of laps. We got out front uh, there at the end. I think it was just track position. When, how we came off pit road, the 11 and the 18 pretty much just kind of kept the, the front of the field at bay for the rest of the day after, you know, with 30 to go. So um, I think that it was pretty evenly matched uh, as the day went on. And we kind of saw that, um, you know, some of the Toyotas and um, I don't know if it was just coincidence or what, but some of the Chevys were kind of working and um, the speed was there in those situations uh, to keep up with the Fords. Go to Al, Jerry, and then Jacob. Yeah, Al Pierce from Auto Week. For you veterans, we'll get to you later, but for you veterans, are y'all happy to be done with the restrictor plate era, or are you sort of uncertain about what's down the road, or, you know, do you just take it as it comes? I think you just take it as it comes. Um, you know, it, it's going to – the racing's going to change. It's going to be it's going to be different when we get to Atlanta than we've ever had before. Um, you know, and, and you know, we, we don't really know what <laughs> expect the unexpected. I guess just like we were for the Daytona 500, we just don't know how the, those races are going to play out. And each track's going to be different. And like I said on media day, you're going to have to give this some time to to really understand if it's better or not, or what you like or dislike about it. Because as these teams evolve and and, and start to uh, figure out this this setup. Uh, you're going to see the racing change again. So, you know, what you see in Vegas 1 to Vegas 2 is probably going to be a little bit different. So, um, you know, if we give it time and, and give it a chance, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll all know next week. Thank you. We'll go to Jerry, Jacob, and then Nate. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires at net. Joey, uh, out there, uh, Michael McDonald went to talk to him afterwards about your conversation. He says that he's paid to drive his car, not yours, and you know that you uh, you guys are – both fours, but he was trying to go for a win. He said you had a lot of damage and didn't feel like you were you were going to be fast at the end. Yeah, at that point, uh, he wasn't going to win. He's going to have to pass Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he <laughs> there's no chance. He jammed on the brakes getting into turn three anyway. I mean, he pretty much just put Joey and I <laughs> alongside and the yeah. 11 to win. I mean, it was like neither one hell? of us got the push on that deal. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we'll go to good Jacob. sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport Magazine. On that note, uh, I've got two questions. First, for Eric, uh, I'm still trying to figure out where you came from. I mean, where, where did that run from three to the flag come from for you to make this a one, two, three finish for JGR? Um, you know, our. <laughs> The car was still pretty good after the damage. It was really, it looks really tore up, but it it went down the straightaway really good. So um, the Sport Clips Camry was pretty quick all day. I think had we not had our issue and had to pit, we uh, we could have been right up there with Kyle and Denny for the remainder of the race, hopefully without damage. But uh, we just got some big runs, holes opened up, and um, you know those guys were up there trying to to fight for a position. And as they were doing that, I was just kind of able to go where they weren't and and had a big run each way and and um, get a few spots. So. I knew I probably wasn't going to win, but uh, you're just trying to maximize points at that point. And for Kyle, um, we heard the radio with a couple to go before, I think, two to go in regulation where uh, you got told the 11 wants to race now. How, how tough is that to balance, you know, when to call the whole call teammates off in the final laps? And did you think this was your best shot? Did you feel like this was your best shot yet to win the 500? Um, yeah, I mean, the 11... We, uh, we we try to work together as much as we can. You kind of see it sometimes at other racetracks as well, too. But um, here at Restrictor Plates, when you have guys like that up front, you try to work together as much as you can. And uh, the situation present kept presenting itself, and it just was what it was. I mean, I'd much rather see a JGR car, in, no offense, but much rather see a JGR car in victory lane than anybody else, obviously. So I felt like keeping our strength in numbers and getting us lined up was going to be the best that uh, that we could be. And um, what was the second part? Yeah, this was probably the best shot to win. Um, being up front that much at the end of the race and having the track position and, and being in those positions on those restarts and whatnot, the, that one restart where Denny wanted to race, I took the bottom because I felt like having the 14 behind me, 14 was pretty fast, and the 22 was behind him. I felt like that was going to be... I think that's how it, no, you were on the outside. It was the 34. I felt like that was going to be um, a good lane for me to be in front of, and um, it... They came off a of two, and they all <laughs> spread out. And then um, that's when the 14 got crashed. And then the, the 11 had the lead because he was ahead at the time. So that, that kind of cost us. And then 
he wanted to go back into uh, teammate preservation mode again. So kind of funny how it swaps back and forth a little bit, but it is what it is. <laughs> we'll go to Nate, Matt, and then upstairs to the press box. <clears throat> Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. This is for Kyle and Joey because you guys both have over 10 years of restrictor plate experience. Um, relatively tame race. Uh, until the last 10 laps, relatively tame in terms of number of crashes, until the last 10 laps. There was one multi-car crash, I believe, until the last 10 laps. Last 10 laps, uh, three crashes, two massive, two red flags. Was that just a case of the over-optimistic driving and aggression you see toward the end of a plate race? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, brains come unglued. That's all it is. Everybody just... The brain connection from right up here to the gas pedal foot doesn't quite work the same anymore. So there's a lot of give and take and a lot of guys that n play the game and, and race the race throughout the beginning portion of the races, and then it comes down to the end. And somehow, some way, there's always that caution within 30 or 40 to go that sets everybody off pit road, and then it's chaos after that. So, um, you know, it's just fact of the matter. I, I think I've been caught up in plenty of those. It was nice to be in front of all of that tonight. <laughs> yeah, you just you know it's coming. You know, it's – and especially this race, you know what's on the line is the Daytona 500. No one's really worried about points or getting themselves into the playoffs yet. Everyone's thinking, I want to win the biggest race of the year. And like Kyle said, the brains come unglued. And instead of uh, people kind of giving light shoves down the straightaway, it becomes full-on attached, all you can. And, uh, and then cars Or Juan Montoya early. style. <laughs> That's the third sound effect today. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> right? Like you're looking at your mirror and you're waiting and you're waiting and they just run right through you. Bam! <laughs> yes. And then you get the, the squirrelies down yep. the straightaway. Yeah. Go to Matt. Matt Weaver, Auto Week again. Uh, for Eric, the fuel pressure, fuel pump issue you had, do you know what that was? No, I, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I was just driving down the front stretch and uh, lost fuel pressure and it was running, but... <clears throat> just not very good so it ran terrible all the way back to pit road i got to pit road pulled in the pit stall and i said no no it's running fine so i took back off and then i ran the rest of the race <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh for ej and for kyle the the jd factor coming up here to daytona first race since to be able to have this unified effort and bring it home one two three extra special yeah i mean for for me it is i think for everybody it is you know it's um Obviously, we all miss JD, and uh, to come here and, and have such a good run, have, you know, we had a good run, but we had really good cars all weekend. We had really good speed, and um, to come out one, two, three, you know, it's, um, it's pretty neat. And uh, not only that, we were, we were up there in contention all day, so that's, um, that was a great day for us overall. Um, pretty, you know, pretty storybook, I would say. Yeah, I'm not a Gibbs driver, um, but for what JD has done for, for my career is the reason why I'm sitting here today. And... Um, as bad as I want to win it, it is pretty cool to think uh, the first race after his, his passing to, to see those cars, one, two, three. It just it says he's up there watching and uh, maybe gave you guys a little extra boost there at the end. So um, congratulations to them. I, I do think that's cool. I can at least remove myself enough to, to look at that and say that's a really cool story for you guys to write about. We'll go upstairs to the press box and then to Holly. Uh, Bruce Martin with Auto Week and with Speed Sport. This is for Eric. Uh, Matt Weaver kind of beat me to my beat me to that question, but the fact is, JD Gibbs aside, you knew him the shortest uh, of anybody up on the dais. What did he mean to you? And also the historical perspective, being the first team to finish one, two, three in a Daytona 500. That's not true. Uh, didn't Hendrick do it in '97? Yeah. 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 Okay, doing it being the second team to finish one, two, three. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's great any time. I mean, any time you can run uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, uh, whatever it is, is a good sign for, for your company and for your team. And it's, uh, it was great to do today. For, for me, um, you know, I knew JD very early in my career at J, JGR uh, when I first got into Xfinity part-time in 2014. Uh, yeah, 2014, I ran a couple races. And and spent a little bit of time with JD. I didn't get to spend much with him, but uh, you know, great guy. Um, my father was a big fan of JD um, and what he was doing at uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. And um, you know, I think I, I think you're hard pressed to find anything that would anybody who would have a bad thing to say about JD. Go to Holly. Sure. Holly Kane, the NASCAR Wire Service. Eric, I just wanted to ask you to speak a little bit about racing here at Daytona on the restrictor plates. I mean, you're 
really proving to be somebody that does very well here with your win last time and, and now they're top three. Yeah, I guess. I was a terrible restricted plate racer for the last uh, however many years I've been coming to them, since 2015 probably. So um, I don't know. It's been, you know, three good races in a row since Daytona, Talladega, and now Daytona again has been good. We finished top ten, top five in a win. So um, I don't know. I <laughs> It's just worked out. You know, I mean, you got to have some luck along the way. And oh, there it is. <laughs> what? You said it. There you go, the L word. And you got to have some. Right. And go back and watch my end car with about three to go. And there's some luck no there. Skill, right? There, I mean, there was some skill, but there was some luck. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just worked out oh good. Boy. We've <laughs> we've had good cars too, so it's uh, it's all worked out. We'll go to Al. Yeah, Al Pierce. One more question for you, Kyle. Joey mentioned that going forward, the rules will change maybe almost every week or every other week. Do you like that that scenario where you and your team have got to adapt to new rules virtually every weekend, or that? do you mind like he does, just, rules, just new take it as it comes along? It's going to be new at every racetrack that we have to figure something out every week. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so the rules, the rule book isn't going to be changing title. every week, but, yeah, with the rules change, this new package, we're all going to have to be adapting each and every week. So, yeah, I, I agree with what Joey was talking about, and, there's going to be particular racetracks that are going to take um, different necessities uh, within the car and, and how you set it up and things like that to make you fast. California is going to be different than Atlanta. That's going to be different than Vegas, which can be different than Martinsville or Bristol or whatever, you know. So obviously with the different packages, too, that we kind of have, you got a 550 horsepower package and a 750 horsepower package. There's going to be differences when you go to some of these places. So those things are all, um, you know, going to mix the field up, I believe. You know, it's going to depend on who kind of – um, hits it running, I guess, next week, um, and who's going to be ahead of the game, and, and what all, with open garages, what all everybody's just going to copy as weeks <laughs> go on. Thank you. Do we have any final questions for this trio of drivers? From here to the far left? Looks like we have two over there. Tom Bowles, Front Stretch. Kyle, I just wanted to ask about Di Benedetto for a minute. Were you guys surprised that he had that much speed today, and what do you think of the new team? Do you think he can get to the same level along with LFR that, you know, at least somewhat of a level that Furniture Row once had with you guys? Yeah, I wasn't surprised at all. Um, having wheels over there and um, and having JGR equipment and stuff like that and being an affiliated team, I feel like they did a really good job, and Matt did a great job behind the wheel. He was fast. He was smooth. He looked really good. Uh, I was just disappointed that he wasn't able to kind of be there at the end. Felt like he was definitely an ally for the 18 car for much of the day. Uh, same with the 20, and, and being able to have that opportunity to be together was good for much of the race, sort of the both of us. And then, um, you know, I think as, as the season goes on, uh, there's certain restrictor plate racing is definitely different than the other racetracks. They're going to have their work cut out for them. They're going to have to figure out what it's going to take exactly to make themselves successful. I wouldn't say they're going to light the world on fire right out of the box, but I'd like to expect them to grow into their situation and, um, and hopefully be uh, an affiliate that we can certainly rely on. I think we had one final question over there on the left. I know that setup is always a big question. And, of course, the setup for the heat of the day and the cool of the night. But during this race, we had a lot of cars get really banged up, and yet some of those banged up cars are still contenders toward the end. How do you all handle when it's something that you know you're not going to be able to fix? And, um, and how do you keep going forward? You were the most wrecked, right? Yeah, I was pretty destroyed. Um, you were good destroyed, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah good. You can bad. get good damage, too, you know. Yeah, we, we got some okay <laughs> damage in there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, at first, I was kind of thinking that, you know, I could still drive it back. I mean, I couldn't really tell how bad it was at the time. But um, it's just such a it's such a race here of, of just perseverance. I mean, you get down to those last 20 laps. Uh, I knew there was probably going to be another wreck. I didn't expect what really happened there, the few we had. But uh you know, getting down to the end, at, at one point I was like, well, there's only 14 cars left. I said, I might as well just go race now. So um, you just got to stick with it. I mean, uh, you know, this is the one track where you can be, you know, have quite a bit of damage and, and still get up there and contend. Uh, and that's what uh, that's what kept me going, knowing we were still going to be in it and be able to get a good finish.